So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowdle. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we have the Lush Life Crochet Blanket. Heard of that before? You may have. This is a replacement but we still have access to the original of the Lush Life. This one is actually bigger. We are using Bernat Blanket Ogo today but you can also use regular Bernat Blanket yarn because it is the same yardage and the same weight. The only difference is that the presentation so that you have a tangle free option that is available to you. In this version what you can do is let the colors just play itself out. So you just go from one tip to the ogo to the other and let the colors change where they will. The nice thing about this one here though is that you can control the color and I would suggest if you're gonna do that um, I'm gonna make those suggestions as well. So what you can do is if you really don't want to um, have all the colors like just randomly play itself out what you can do is just reach in between and pull it apart just boom and therefore you have all the sections then individually and then you can control the color. But don't you dare throw anything out because what you don't use when you're going to do this just keep it and the next time it comes up you can just uh, use that up and then continue along with another Ogo if you would like to do that as well. So it's a very generous size uh, blanket here and it's 52 inches by 60. It's a nice throw and we're gonna get started. There is a crochet diagram available to you as well. So this blanket here has color play to it. So you can see that the designer here just randomly did it. There's no instructions for when you should change it. But what I would recommend to you that if you are going to change it always do it when you are on the side that is gonna come straight on down. So when you pop it down into these front post uh, trebles that come on down that's when I would change it before starting that row. So therefore the drop down is very um, is really quite eye pleasing. So if you, what I would do then is look at the Ogo and determine if you have enough to drop down or not and if you don't think that you do just change the color before you do the drop down to something else in order to get that. So you can go as many uh, rows that you would like to go and uh, you can even like break apart your Ogos and do a whole massive section of the one color and etc. So that's up to you and we're gonna get started. Right now you'll need a 10 millimeter size N as in Nancy crochet hook in order to play. When you unwrap your Ogo and you cut it apart and you pull that plastic piece out your Ogo should be going with the point and it looks a little more narrow. This one here I have wound up a little bit um, because I was demonstrating for something else. So that will come on the one side and then you can just put this on a, a side arm or a coffee table and sometimes what I would recommend is that maybe get something else maybe and just put it up like this so it props it up so you have space underneath and therefore to come uh, to your hands quite nicely. So you can do that and that's just a suggestion. So I'm just gonna start with the tip of the Ogo and then I'm gonna show you some color play as we go along. So if you would like to change the size of this blanket it's in multiples of two plus three. So you go two, 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 two. If you're satisfied add another three more chains and you will have the balance. The first one here at the time of filming says 78 double crochet it should be 79 and I've also verified that also doing a sample. So let's uh, begin and start our chain work with your 10 millimeter size N is a Nancy crochet hook today. So let's begin by doing a slip knot and this is an easy level pattern and what I need you to do is either if you want the exact size chain 81 and if you'd like to change the size you can do your multiples of two plus three. So I'm gonna do my multiples so one, two, and then one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two. Am I happy with the width? Yes or no? And if you're not just keep on going or chain the 81. It's up to you. Once you're happy with the width just add three more. So one, two, three and this will give you the nice uh, odd number that you'll need on row number one in order to complete this. Let's move to row number one now. To do row number one you're going to go four chain from the hook. So just count it back. So just one, two, three and four. Normally I would tell you to go on the back hump of the chain. The problem with burnout blankets because it's so thick is that it will leave a gapping space right in the very beginning. So what I'm going to recommend is do it conventional way. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and when you go to the fourth I need you to put so that there's two strands on the top. So when you go to wrap the hook for the double crochet make sure there's two strands on top, one on the bottom. 
normally it's the other way around if you've been following me for years. And that will that will close up later. So then move along your chain doing the same thing. So next one and just wrap the hook and go into each of the chains all the way across. So you should have an odd number when you get over there if you're changing the size. And then if you're doing exactly as the pattern states you will have 79 double crochets. Please do this all the way across. This is row number one. So I've just completed row number one. So there is an odd number. There's only 13 here and that means that it will work. So when you go to turn around if you don't have enough of the same color to get all the way across every other row what I'm about to do is exactly the same. It's just single crochets across. So if you don't think you can get all the way across then just look at your ogo and pull the same color from a different ogo in order to get all the way across and then you can change the color at the end of that if you wish. So that's called color play if, if just to recap that. So to begin then what you need to do for row number two and this is part of the repeat you'll chain one and you'll single crochet yourself all the way across. So you won't need to worry about color play too often. It's only when the colors on your ogo look like they're coming down to an end. And of course if you don't wanna color play at all and let the yarn play its own tune you can do that. Please just single crochet across for row number two. If you're new to crochet the turning chain here that is a stitch. So make sure you go right into the chain work not into a space and finish it. Okay so you should have the same count of stitches as you just did. So there's 13 single crochets here and you'll get used to that. If you miss it you'll end up with a triangle blanket. Turn your work and we're going to begin row number three and let's do that next. So if you were to change your color this is the row that you would do it on or you can do it on number five as well. So the drop down is the change. So I'm not gonna change I have enough yarn here. So I'm going to just chain three. So one, two and three. That's your first double crochet. And now your second one will be around this post down here. That's a front post treble. So wrap that hook twice and come on down and slip on the side of that post across. Grab the yarn, pull through. You will have four loops on the hook here. Do you see that? So then yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And yarn over, pull through two. And so now that's wrapped around that one. So that counts as a stitch that it's about that's sitting in front of. So if you put it back up that counts as this one. So your next double crochet is the one right over it. And if you're not sure you just look at your work and just follow the lines up and down. So that's a double crochet. So it would be the one that is directly above this one. So the next one is another front post treble. So it's every other stitch. So it, it'll be around this one here because this one's not touched. So every other one will have that sequence. So wrap the hook twice into the side and out and pull through and pull through two and two. So you do that total three times. That counts as the one that is sitting in front of. So just lean it back if you're not sure. It's this one and then that next one is your double crochet. And that counts as this one. So your next one is right here. So front post treble. That counts as the one that's sitting in front of. So come to the next one. So you'll get used to it pretty quickly I would assume. And I want you to do that all the way across. This is row number three and I'll be back in just a moment. By the time you get all the way across you'll have just your last stitch left and that will be a double crochet. So just think about it. The one before is the front post treble and if you look at when you started you did this chain through which is a double crochet and then a front post um, treble there. So just make sure you keep an eye on that. So turn your work and let's begin row number four. So number four is like we already showed. So make sure that you have enough yarn. If not just jump the next yoga, uh, ogo to get that color if you need it and chain one and do one single crochet all the way across. This is row number four. I'm going to force a color change. Um, shortly. So just single crochet across and this is row number four. I'll be back in just a moment. So when you come all the way across you'll have that chain three that you started with. Don't forget that. So make sure you single crochet into the turning chain and not into the space underneath. So turn your work and let's begin row number five. So this would be where you would change a color if you would want to do that. Let's begin number five and let's examine this. 
So the difference of three and five is where these front post trebles come on down. So the first two stitches will be two double crochet, so one double crochet each and then the next one would drop down into this one here. So it goes in between the two that are already popping so it pulls it out. And so you'll do that. You'll do that all the way across so just uh, just up and down like you do. It's just the very start and the ending is different. So the last two rows in order to keep the balance will just be a double crochet each. So row five is chain three. So one, two, three. It's your first double crochet. So instead of coming down in the front post double, uh, front post treble like before, you're just going to double crochet the first one out. So you technically have two double crochet in a row. So the next one is around this one that is in between the front post trebles from before. So that's what's creating that ripple effect. Really does remind me of the Sable Beach in Ontario, Canada. That's where I grew up and it reminds me of the sandbars. So that counts as the one it's sitting in front of and now that we have it established if you follow this one straight up that's your next double crochet anyway. So it's either the one, see you skip that one in this one. So just use those visual cues to speed yourself through. So if you've done a double crochet the next one is pulling this one in between there. Front post treble. Okay and then double crochet in the next. So it's the one that's sitting in front of it. It's the one right next to it and it's the one straight on up. So please do this all the way across. I'll meet you at the end of this row. This is row number five. At the end of row number five the last two are just double crochet. So we're keeping in the sequence and then we have to start rows number two through five all over again. So that is your first repeat done. Turn your work and let's do rows number two through five one more time and let's force a color change to show you how that's done. So going back to row number two make sure you have enough of the color to go all the way across. It's just a recommendation unless you want the oboe to play its own tune. So chain up one and do one single crochet in each. I'm going to force a color change at the end of this and remember it's the one that drops down in front that I recommend. It's where the color changes for the most maximum impact for your eyes. It's like eye candy right? Please single crochet across for row number two once again. So coming up to the end of row number two there's the turning chain. Make sure you go right into the turning chain. So if I decide that I look at my Ogo and there's not enough of this color to go all the way across then you could do a force change. You could also force this to change to the same color. So if you have this color and you wanna continue to use the same, same color just grab a different Ogo of the, of the same color in sequence and then just use it to continue if you'd like to. But in the meantime I'm going to trim it and I'm gonna show you how to get rid of the tail ends. And then we're gonna start fresh with row number three with a new color. And it's not in the Ogo but I just got some Bernat blanket yarn on the side that I can use just to demonstrate for you today. So just put it through a tapestry needle. Highly recommend that. And then just stay on the back side. So if you're looking at the texture just that's the front. So stay on the back side and just put this through some stitch work. And I need you to drag it through a total of three times. So drag it once. Don't change the shape of the blanket and go in a slightly different path back in the opposite direction. This is twice and finally one more time three times. The secret for really good hiding yarn is to go back and forth a three times on there and then simply just trim it down. So that means that we're gonna start row number three and I'll use a fresh color to demonstrate. So we're back here and we're going to go to number three. So I'm gonna start off with a slip knot with a new color. So it's gonna be the drop down. So to do this start in your very first stitch and attach. So just going in just yarn over and pull through and through and lay this down on top of the line. And you may wanna leave that long enough that you can do the tapestry needle as I just showed you. So chain three. So one, two, three. This is number three so you've already technically done it before. So coming on down to the next one all the way down here do a front post treble. Okay and then that counts as the one it's sitting in front of. So the next one if you follow it up is right there and that's a double crochet. 
see and this makes those front post trebles really dramatic. So front post treble around the next one. So you see the ones that are already there. It's the one double crochet that's on its own and make that now a front post treble. And then follow the next one up double, cro double crochet. Please do this all the way across. This is row number three. So coming all the way across just following the pattern as I know it. And then double crochet in that final chain or sorry that final single crochet there and this completes row number three. So you can change the colors pretty much whenever you want whenever you feel like it. So just to go to number four just chain up one and one single crochet across. Make sure you have enough yarn to get over there and then I'll be back in a second and we'll review number five in a moment. Coming across at number four in the turning chain you'll just put in a single crochet. We have to put that through a tapestry needle eventually. Turn your work and let's review doing number five again. So just chain up three. So one, two, three and see this is a front post um, treble which is next. So that means this one has to be a double crochet to shift the alignment. And now the next one here is a front post treble. So you're just working in between. Very easy pattern once you understand it. And then you can just front post, sorry, double crochet the next. So if you want dramatic striping you can change as often or as little as you want to. Um, really the color play is up to you. There is no border on this uh, idea. If people do message through I want a border what would you do? I would just do a single crochet border if you would like to just finish it off just equally space it. Put three single crochets in a corner if you're turning a corner and uh, you can do that. Um, it's kind of easy like really easy and uh, you know you can experiment with anything but of course anything that you add to it uh, you will use more yarn. So that's just something to keep in mind and this is the Lush Life blanket. I will show you how to fasten off at the end just to make sure you understand that as well. So at the end of number five remember that the two are double crochets each. So let's just say I finished my blanket. I'm happy with it. You can finish it at any point. Um, the last row is going to be just row number five. So it's this would be technically the last row and it will be back in balance that you would like to do. So then you can just trim your yarn and just throw it through a tapestry needle like I showed you already. So just pulling it through and favor the back side. So just turn it and then just come back and forth a total of three times. Just stay within the underneath the edge itself. Don't mess with the edge and when you pull on the first time don't change the shape. So just make sure it's taut and then just keep going back and forth a total of three times. Some people say this method doesn't uh, work. Uh, I've not really had an issue with that at all to be able to comment to saying it it doesn't work but you know if you know a better way then of course always exercise your own creativity and your own thoughts. And uh, these ones here that are on their own. So what I would do with that just throw that in a tapestry needle and you don't wanna mess with the look of that because it's being changed on the one that's dropping down. So when you go to hide this one just hide it within the chain work itself. So going straight up and stay within the same color like that. And then again just back and forth three times and make sure that you're not changing the shape. So this is the Lush Light Blanket. It's a brand new uh, version of it. It's bigger and it's uh, using Bernat Blanket Ogo as an option and of course uh, Ogos are the same size as the original so you can go either side. So you can either do the balls or the Ogos and you're good to go. Have a good one and it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. We'll see ya.